In this video, I'll be giving an introduction to bed tools. The main goals of this video is to outline input file formats for bed tools and give examples of, of how to run bed tools and the different sub commands. Bed tools uses various file formats, but the main file format that I'll want to spend a bit more time on is called the browser extensible data format or bed file format. The minimum requirement for bed file is are, are three fields, namely the chromosome name or scaffold name, the start coordinate, and the end coordinate. Additionally, nine other additional fields can be embedded to each feature. I will not go into depth for all these nine additional fields, but I'm showing you sort of examples so that you can see what can go into these additional nine fields. And they also depend on what the features that are being highlighted in the bed file are, and essentially making sure how useful they are to be included in a bed file. And as far as the file extensions for a bed file go, they're simply in, encoded by a .bed or depending on how many columns are included in that particular bed file, it could be a bed three format where three columns are included or bed 12 where all 12 columns are included in that particular bed file. And so the main reason a bed file is attractive for use with bed tools is its simplicity in just giving you the start, the stop, and the chromosome that that file is encoded. However, there are other files that bed tools can take as input. These are namely the generic feature format or GFF file format, which is more complicated and more detailed and has been used a lot in annotating gene features in, in, in genomes. Another file format that bed tools can use is called the variant call format or VCF file. And this is a file that encodes variants within the genome. Um, and it's also very detailed depending on the varying calling algorithm that was used and essentially what information is embedded in that particular file. Um, and one of the important thing that I want to highlight about the various file formats is that there are different coordinate systems that are being, that are used. Namely, there's a zero base and a one base sequence uh, coordinate format that are used. So the one base coordinate system essentially labels the first position as, num as one and uh, so on and so forth. It is inclusive at the start coordinate and inclusive at the end coordinate. Whereas the zero base coordinate system is, starts at the zeroth position, it is inclusive at the start position and exclusive at the end position. So for this toy example where we have TAAC, the start coordinate is included in that particular annotation. And the stop coordinate is also included in that particular co coordinate. So it will be labeled for chromosome example one, start three and stop six. However, in a zero base coordinate system, the start position will be labeled as a two since it's starting at, a, at position zero for the start coordinate. And because it is exclusive for the stop coordinate, the stop will actually be a six in this particular example. And so you can imagine you'd want to convert from one system to another. And so for example, if you want to convert zero base coordinate system to one base coordinate system, the start for the one coordinate base system will be the start for the zero plus one and the end coordinates will actually remain the same. So different files have different base systems or coordinate systems. Um, namely, the bed file actually is in zero base uh, coordinate system, whereas the GFF, GTF, SEM, and VCF files are all in one base, and while the BAM files and the BCF files are all zero base. And so rule of thumb, I guess, for most of these is that uh, if you can read it, if it's human readable, it is usually in one base system, and if it's compressed and you cannot read it, it's in zero base sy system except for bed files. So the bed file is the only exception where it is actually in zero base and it's human readable. So bed files can be processed with bed tools um, and it's essentially sort of like a Swiss army knife 
for doing genomic analyses. It performs genome arithmetics on different coordinate-based systems, and it uses multiple genome file formats, as I have highlighted, namely the BEV file, BEM file, GFF, GTF, and VCF. Um, so BedTools actually comes with a whole array of subcommands. I would recommend to go to the BedTools documentation to see each and every one of these subcommands. For today, I'll only highlight six subcommands. And these subcommands that I'll highlight are BedTools sort, BedTools intersect, BedTools closest, BedTools window, BedTools get faster, and BedTools jacquard. And in order to run BedTools, you, you specify BedTools, the subcommand, the options that go with that particular subcommand, and the input files that you want to use. So before you do anything with bed tools, the most important thing to note is that all the files need to be sorted. Um, and so to do so, you'd use bed tool sort, specify the options and the input files. In this particular toy example, we have chromos uh, an example on chromosome one and the bed files annotated or labeled as an a.bed. Essentially, when you're sorting a bed file, you'll sort by the chromosome columns, the first column, and then the second column, and then the last column. So when you look at, compare the first bed file and the unsorted bed file, and the sorted bed file, you can see that it is sorted numerically by the second column. It is important to note that BedTools actually uses the Unix sort command, uh, and essentially uh, uses that since it's e efficient and, and really fast. Um, so the first example in terms of uh, looking at bed regions and finding overlapping regions is, called, is using, you'd use the tool called bed tools intersect. And essentially what it does is it is self-explanatory. So you find given two files, A and B, if you want to find regions that overlap, you call bed tools intersect, specify the file A and the file B, all files in the B section that you want to find overlapping regions. It will give you the overlapping regions that are included in both files. Inversely, you could also specify the regions that do not intersect or do not overlap in both files using the dash V command. Another option, say for example, you want to get those intersecting regions and other regions that are within a specific, specified window, you use bed tools window. Um, the file, the Subcommands are very self-explanatory, so you can usually get an idea of what the command is doing by what the name that command has. So for this example, we have regions in B, and you want to find, say, for example, regions that are within 5KB of that particular region. You'd use the dash W command, specify the, the number of bases that you want to include, and that will return overlapping regions within a specified window. Another Subcommand that is similar to bed tools intersect as is, is bed tools closest. And essentially this gives you the nearest region from a feature. And so say for example, you have a chip peak, peaks from a chip data set and you want to find the closest peak that falls in another file, uh, you would use a bed tools closest file. And there are different ways that you can employ this subcommand. Now again, recommend to go back to the documents for bed tools to get details on how to run the specific subcommands given varying um, situations that you might fall into. Um, another command that is very useful that we will also use in, in the workshop is called bed tools get faster. And essentially given a bed file coordinates, you can specify uh, regions that you want to extract from the faster file and get sequences using that, those two files, so the FASTA file and the BED file. And essentially you'll get the file sequences that you, a, sequ a file with sequences that you'd essentially use for downstream analyses. Um, and the last command that I want to highlight is called the BED tools jacquard. And essentially this allows you, given intersecting regions, to get a single statistic that summarizes how similar two input files are based off of the overlapping regions. And essentially, Jacquard calculates the intersection and divides that by the union of the files, the union of the, of the overlapping regions and 
and subtracts that from the intersection. And so essentially you get a value that ranges from zero to one, with zero being not similar at all and one being exactly the same. And so this toy example, we're seeing that we have a similarity index, a drug hard index of 0 0.4. So this is very helpful in getting an idea of how similar two experiments are or two conditions are, depending on what you're looking for and at. So to summarize, with bed tools, the key is to sort in order to make bed tools very efficient. So before you do anything with bed tools, you want to sort. Second, I didn't go into depth with this second point, but bed tools is a command line tool, meaning that you can run this in the Unix environment and you can pass actually Unix commands once you've processed bed tools, bed, bed files using, using bed tools. And uh, another important point is that you need to go and read the documentation because they are detailed and they cover various instances that I didn't go over in this video, but will be very helpful if you want to do something more specific with your data, data sets. And lastly, there are a lot of resources out there for bed tools. I recommend going to uh, one of the authors of bed tools and looking over his uh, videos 